Remember Piccadilly Circus brought off a huge go in the Phillies event a few years ago, the day that I think Lady of the Pines won the 1,000 guineas, so no doubt you'll catch up with the winner of the both legs of the debutante and uh, earmark their future potential for us. As we go trackside, speaking of potential, a man who's realised it all, Greg Miles. We've got two or three to come along and we'll have them ready first on the programme. And uh, the favourite is our Webster. Well tried second pick is Nikos on track and Appian Way is an easing third elect and then Scala Glow. Not too far off a start. We need two to move in there, Scala Glow and Appian Way. Rail in the true place as it was here on Saturday. Track is dead 5.09 or Vinery Australia 1000 Guineas Day. Here's Scala Glow coming up. Easing favourite, our Webster drawn gate three in the maroon and white colours of Mr and Mrs Crabtree. Happy and way to come up now and we'll have them ready to go. Keys are late scratching in the thousand guineas and another late scratching two race six, number 11, Grand Seattle. Our Webster's been quite a drifter on track. Still retains favouritism though. Nikos is the second elect. Happy and way right up behind the gates now. And is locked in. So the Colts and Geldings ready for the debut top. 900. Racing. Our Webster jumped very well. Nikos out OK. Happy and Way began very fast on the outside. Settling into stride now. They put 150 behind them. And it's Happy and Way going to the lead over Undenied. And our Webster is third. A length and a half Nikos. Over on the outside of it then. Dane Hill Warrior followed by Scarla Glow. Then came Baron Joey Sunrise on the inside being trailed as they come towards the home turn by Nasuno. And last of all is Valid Reason. Around the turn Undenied gets up on the inside and leads in company with Happy and Way clear of our Webster and Dane Hill Warrior deeper out trailed by Nikos and Nasuno trying to work home well in the straight undenied the inside and Appian Way our Webster's closing on them and Nasuno's coming home well from Nikos Appian Way narrowly undenied kicking well on the inside undenied and on the outside Appian Way with Nasuno closing and Nikos getting through undenied still in front they hit the line and undenied undenied on the inside as one I'd say Nasuno will grab second Nikos is close up there with our Webster just behind them Appian Way died slightly on his run and then came Dane Hill Warrior who dropped out followed by Baron Joey Sunrise Scarlet Glow and last to finish is Valid Reason. Undenied fighting on tremendously and he's got the prize on the inside number eight written by Jim Cassidy trained by Matthew Highland a half brother to the winners unfettered and unanswered. He'd had one outing and ran second behind Dane Hill Warrior in a trial at Cranbourne the 21st of September. 8-5 and two are official. The winner 15-10 and 3.50 undenied. Nasuno 3.40 and Nikos will pay $1.50. A blanket finish, 8-5, two across the track and undenied scraping home on the inside favorite looking to have his chance in the race. He's been beaten all up about three quarters of a length on the line after sitting on the pace all of the way our Webster but he couldn't finish the race off there but undenied with first use of the track holding the inside rail and finding plenty in the run home under vigorous whip riding from Jay Cassidy. Undenied paid officially 15.10 and 3.50 Nasuno 3.40 and Nikos $1.50 Quinella $112.80 the exacta $195.10 and the trifecta $1041.80 on 852 and the time 52.74 OK, that's not too far outside the record, incidentally, which is 51.40. Race two, we see the fillies going around, the youngsters at 12.58. OK, Greg, nice time. And, Andrew, what a gem of a ride, Jimmy Cassidy. Yeah, Jay Cassidy wins the first race again, as he did on Saturday. Well done to you, Matt Highland, the trainer of Undenied. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're really pleased. What do you expect today? Um, I expect him to run pretty damn close you know he uh he's trolled up well uh he put up a bit shinny after his last trial so he's he hasn't done a lot in the last week and uh not that i was really worried about that but i was just a bit worried about you never know with these two-year-olds how they're going to respond until you get them there on race day you know you don't know how how, much, how really badly shin sore they are so yeah no i was really pleased found plenty when uh, plenty of other horses came at him yeah i think he's gonna make a handy horse he, he just looks he looks about two months away from it and we're probably gonna have a hard decision whether we sort of go again or or we go to the paddock but i i think once I have a look at his shins and see what happens see the horse i think the right thing for the horse would be just to have a little break how'd you pick it uh, under night up uh greg wells bred it i've got all greg's horses and uh yeah so he's 
pretty happy to try it for Greg, I'll tell you. Yeah, no, no. Well done to you, mate. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Matt Highland joining us there. Brendan undenied the winning trainer. Yeah, you can't deny it was a good ride either. 52.74 as they return. There's the pumper in those prominent colours. The runner-up number five, uh, a Mukadama galloper, which produced a nice run. And third was the Rubiton horse from the John Hawkes yard. And here we go, the low angle and the pumper with the baldy face chestnut. A half relation to unfettered and unanswered. Well, it looks as though um, as they near the line at uh, Caulfield, Notice that Riona, when it did win, it did come from a fair way off him. So let's face it, she's no good thing, but does look particularly well, very hard and very fit, particularly for one of John Hawkes' horses that's only had one run. I put in number 14, Toast to the Coast, to run second. Um, Tony uh, likes this horse. It's trolled OK uh, in its jump outs as well. Looks hard and fit and of nice size too and I think that's a key and it's drawn right alongside Riona so we'll be able to have a good look at two of them at least in the early stages of the race. Number six, Dharma Dinesh, well okay, it's, we've only been informed that it's it's trialled well, done everything right and it's jump outs here so you have to respect what people have seen, it's very very hard but it's a nice looking individual. Number two, a brief embrace, the more I look at this horse and uh, seeing it going out to the yard behind the gates looks nice and relaxed i know they're having a little bit of trouble getting it in but ignore that that means absolutely nothing looks particularly nice just wrapping up here brendan one ahead of 14 six and two and just of another's with a little bit of uh, appearance about them number seven fuji dancer looks okay OK, where well, there's smoke, there's fire, and there's money for Brief Embrace, which is the one which has really taken Alf's eye by a first-season sire called Ergun, a speed influence out of Tranquil Love, who I mentioned earlier, an Eagle Farm course record holder over 1,000 metres. Now, the stewards' uh, hearing continues at Warwick Farm. Protest on the first race, third v first, alleging interference, final 200 metres. And that continues. We have important late scratching Doombin later on with one of the uh, top chances, Sokova, out of race five, number nine, with that heavy track. Other late scratchings from race three, Pedro and Les, one of the leading hopes, is out. Race five, number nine, and then we go to race six, number five, Bolton Creek. All three of those late scratchings due to the track condition. Doombin, nine minutes away, a check of the ratings. They made them two and seven, ahead of five and number eight. Crystal Hill, a dollar and fifty cents. Odds on out of the former Queensland Oaks winner, Crystal Palace, who won that on a rain affected track. Good move for the two. Brief embrace. No surprises to see that. The Peter Moody stable in form as we link up with Greg Miles. Need about five to come in and we'll have them right to go. So Riona, top pick David Anoche, the trial winner, and Taste of the Coast, who ran second in that trial behind David Anoche and looked very forward trained on the track, are the uh, three at the top of betting. Bubba's Beauty is moving up into the stalls. It's the outsider after a poor trial performance. The Rossiter gets it and Go Marion, and uh, now we've got one through the front there. That's uh, Dama de Noche has broken through the front of the stalls. Damien Oliver's ride and has uh, only gone about 120 metres and has been very quickly been brought under control by Damien. So uh, one would think no problem there although with the youngsters it's always uh, a mental thing more than anything you don't want one little step going wrong particularly when they're having their first outing but she uh, looked uh, quite intelligent didn't bolt off and go crazy and Damien had her under control very very quickly she was bought at the Magic Million sales for $150,000 down at Anoche, sporting blinkers first time after wearing them to an impressive untouched trial win. But Riona's got the form on the board in a racetrack outing, and that's always a great advantage. Now this filly is behind the line again, down at Anoche. No problem taken from that little escapade. She's coming straight back into the line. Riona the favourite. They look set. 
racing and Riona pinged away brilliantly. Fuji Dancer missed the start. David Anoche jumped okay. Cats are showing plenty of pace and so is Go Marion. As they settle into stride now and Riona's being joined on the inside by David Anoche and Brief Embrace has gone through on the inside too. Toast the Coast is settling down fourth followed by Cats and then came Colonial Jester. Go Marion two lengths further back is uh, back behind those horses. Then on the outside Little Miss Lythe and Shell I swing on the rail. They're clear of the Rossa and then Bubba's Beauty and Fuji Dancer. La Rocha is well back with Thinkabelle and well toned. Into the straight now. Brief Embrace is the leader in the centre from Riona. Toast the Coast trying to get clear. David Anoche can't go on and next is Cats. 150 to go though. Brief Embrace is the leader by a length and a half to Toast the Coast and Riona. Brief Embrace is going. Great guns near the line though and is coming clear and Brief Embrace wins it well from in second placing uh, was Toast the Coast and Riona third. They were trailed then by Shall I Swing, Go Marion, and then came Colonial Jester, clear of Cats. Back behind these fillies, Fuji Dancer has made significant ground after a slow start, and then came Little Miss Lithe, followed by Well Tone, La Rocha well back all of the way, followed by Bubba's Beauty. Dharma Danosh has tired very badly and finished amongst the tailenders in company with the Rosser, and one more, that was Thinkabelle. Bre a nice win, that brief embrace. All important will be the time on that race, uh, comparison with the first of the debutant stakes. Well, Peter Moody was quietly confident pre-race. I think he might have a smart two-year-old Andrew Bensley. Yeah, well done to you, Pete. Yeah, nice win, Andrew. Uh, she scared me a bit at the start. She came away a neck behind them again, but she mustered nicely. And uh, You warned us of that, I guess. Yeah, that's right, but she's uh, always shown us above average ability, and she had a jump out here last Tuesday and sort of showed us, you know, that she was well above average and... Uh, you know, look forward to a nice future with her, I think. She's been down for less than a fortnight here. Uh, do you press on, or what, what are your plans? She is a Magic Millions filly, filly but um, I spoke to the owners before the race, and I felt my recommendation would be we'd put her away for the autumn. So, uh, you know, uh, I think we'll look at better races in the autumn with her because she's just dying to grow. She's a bit backward and immature. Uh, you know, I think keeping her up for January will be a bit too much at this stage. The mum, Tranquil Love, she was a pretty quick mare, wasn't she? She was a very fast mare in Queensland, uh, held a five furlong record at uh, Eagle Farm for a good while. But, um, you know, I think this filly, uh, although she showed a turn of foot today, everything she's shown us in a jump out, she wants to settle and hit the line. So, uh, you know, I think she'll be looking at longer trips. Well, you've got the one winner, Car Brussel, still to come. And the one volant in the uh, second last. Yeah, well, hopefully we're looking forward to a nice day. Right, Started good. off well. You have. Well done, Thanks, Pete. Andrew. Peter Moody joining us there. They've run 52.58 for the second race here. Just checking the first time. They were in 52.74 in the first. So a little bit quicker in that race, Brendan. Yep, and there'll be some Queensland uh, breeders very happy with the success of young sire Ergun, who's the sire of Brief Embrace. Uh, well tried, particularly late in betting. Now, the stewards... Uh, we're awaiting a decision. Uh... Support Pentathlon has also been backed on track, but the uh, absolute clear favourite in the race is Road to Dance. Very good win at Sandown, as we saw in our preview this morning, and looks every inch like the 1600 will suit him. Uh, Tiamo's ready, the grey on the outside of Highly Dangerous. Resoundingly and warm smites her. Mr Trickster is set with Sir Juro. Now the favourite road to dance. Moved into the gates for Brett Preble. Brief embrace winning the second. The first taken out by Undenied. Rainbow Glider moved along into the line. Now Don Eduardo to get set with circumnavigating phase tip and pentathlon. Now circumnavigating ready. Pentathlon to come along. Another son of Octagonal having his second run in from a break though and uh, out to 1600 metres. Always a tough SA. Phase tip lined up into the gates. The multi million dollar colt Don Eduardo lined up into the gates and Pentathlon is ready so they're set to run. Road to Dance, the clear favourite, four from the outside, and they're away. He jumped reasonably well. Soon after the jump, it's Warm Smites are narrowly from Highly Dangerous and Mr Trickster going up. Sir Joro's going forward as well, looking for the front as they put the first 200 behind them now. And Mr Trickster finds the lead. Sir Joro, his outside. Warm Smites are let them go. And sat third, the rail, followed then by Pentathlon moving up into fourth placing. Face tip wide out going to fifth, and they're followed by Tiamo Circumnavigating. Highly Dangerous down on the inside, and then Road 
Parade to Dance, who's trapped out three wide here. A length and a half further back, resoundingly, and they're trailed by Don Eduardo and Rainbow Glider. They're inside the 1,000 metres, and Pentathlon moved up on the outside and has joined Mr Trickster in the front. Phase Tip is not having much luck, has moved up into third, but pasted wide, followed then by Sajoro, and on the rail, Warm Smiter, and then came Circumnavigating. Two lengths, highly dangerous, ahead the outside, Tiamo Road to Dance, trailed then by resoundingly Don Eduardo and Rainbow Glider last of all as they came up the side to the 600 and off the rail Pentathlon joined again by Mr Trickster on the rail a length to phase tip warm Smiter followed by Sir Joro a length and a half away circumnavigating road to dance are starting to make some ground and then came Tiamo and a break to Don Eduardo and resoundingly who are well back as they cornered Mr Trickster against the rail in front of warm Smiter of Pentathlon and Sir Joro uh, road to dance swung wide and spots them a fair start down to the 200 Mr Trickster's kicked away with a nice lead over Pentathlon, Sir Joro, Warm Smiter, and then Road to Dance, Mr Trickster, nicely clear from Sir Joro, Road to Dance and Tiamo making late ground at Mr Trickster in front, Mr Trickster beats Sir Joro by two, Road to Dance got up for third from Tiamo, Pentathlon, circumnavigating, and then Warm Smiter, behind them Rainbow Glider, Don Eduardo, resoundingly, and then came Highly Dangerous and Faze Tip dropped out to finish last. Mr Trickster the winner. He raced on the pace all of the way and he sprinted away from them coming around the home turn. Too good. Third run in from a break, number two, Mr Trickster, the winner. Strengthening the Royal Code line. He was well beaten by Royal Code last time out when he sat on the pace but weakened. But for the benefit of a couple of runs under his belt and uh, a great turn of acceleration at the turn, it put the race well beyond the others' uh, chances of catching him. 2-8 and 4 it is official in the Robert Taranto handicap. Mr Trickster, Danny Nikolic first, trained on the track by Mick Price. Number 8 second, Sajoro, written by Corey Brown. And number 4 third, Road to Dance, written by Brett Preble. 2-8 and 4. Fourth in was number 6, Tiamo. Time there, 138.46, 138.46. Well, he's uh, bolted in there. He uh, certainly has improved a bit on his uh, recent outings. I guess down that little bit in great. He went round in that listed event at Flemington last time out, but he certainly made some improvement on that. He was originally purchased for some $35,000. Earlier this year, the connections knocked back an offer of around $80,000 when he was uh, winning that restricted race at Flemington. He did make a jump from a maiden to... A restricted race to win in town in one hit. That's always a, a good sign of a quality horse. And he's bounced back to his right form today. 2-8-4 on race number three. Next on the card starts the quaddy. It's the Spring Country Cup. Field of 13 to run. Corey Brown on number 12. Race four at 2-10. OK, Greg, Mr Trickster in those Mick Price colours. One by Brocco beating the less fancied of the two Bart Cummings trained runners, Sir Jorro. Uh, which finished in second position. Sir Jorah Woodman horse out of Pink Moccasin. Uh, the other of Bart's runners resoundingly ran into some traffic on the home turn. And uh, that was with a rainbow glider. Those two copping the worst of it uh, as they turned for home. 138.46. 138.46. Now rain teeming down at Doombin. And it's four minutes until a start time, and no jockeys out. In fact, here they come now. They're Starthick at Cedars, so they're about to be legged on board. And uh, in this race, Pedro and but Lord Archley has been uh, well supported in the last few minutes. They're all in now for the Spring Cup. This is a good field. Ready to go. Racing now at the 1600 metres. Lovely dispatch too. Rupert and Gold Road began fast with Barillet on their outside into stride nicely. Mrs Bentley not far away from them with Never Dull and then came Ukulele Player followed by Luke's Loot near the inside. Going forward Lord Ardsley around Atomic Man. Runs to win eases over the hills to get up on the rails and back towards the tail end of the field there are small spoils being trailed by Samasira and Ferrejaka on his outside. Barillet had found the lead before the 1000 metres. Never Dull joining him. Ukulele 
Lady players out three wide. Next, Rupert the outside of Gold Robe and Wonder Lord Archley three deep, a thousand to go now. Then Luke's Loot who's over on the outside of runs to win a length and a half Atomic Man, Wonder Mrs. Bentley. Small Spoils next on the inside, trailed by Freira Jacques and two Samasira. Barillet by the 800 by about a half length to a neck to never dull. Ukulele players posted three wide. Rupert right behind them in fourth from Gold Robe. Lord Ardsley's out three deep too but does have a little cover. A length and a half runs to win on the inside, trailed then by Luke's Loot, one Atomic Man, one and a half Mrs. Bentley, Small Spoils, Freira Jacques and Samasira. Up to the turn, Barillet narrowly around the bend. He's going to straighten about a neck in advance of never dull. Ukulele player, Lord Ardsley's come four wide under pressure and then Gold Robe and Rupert from runs to win. In the straight, Barillet the leader from never dull. Ukulele player three deep and then Gold Robe, Lord Ardsley and Rupert. Barillet under pressure here. Never dull's grabbed it. Ukulele player's been three wide but put his nose in front. Here's Small Spoils bursting through the pack now. Rupert got up on the inside and Small Spoils. They go to the lead together. Rupert and Small Spoils, they hit the line. Nearly a dead heat. Small Spoils and Rupert have hit it very, very close. Third is another photo. Mrs. Bentley, ukulele player, and Frere Jacques have made late ground. Runs to win just behind them with Lord Ardsley. Then came Neverdull, followed by Samasira, Atomic Man, Barillet, tiring badly along the inside, and then Gold Robe and Luke's Loot. Judges call for a photo, and Small Spoils will get it. On the outside, Andrew Findlay, Eric Bromfield, number eight, will get the verdict over Rupert. Judged about the semaphore numbers in the time of 137.41. And Mrs. Bentley and ukulele player figure prominently for third. There's the number. Eight, the winner. Number eight, small spoils first. Number 12 was second. Rupert, Corey Brown, and one third, Mrs. Bentley, written by Dan Nicolick, eight, 12, and one. Uh, small spoils. An upset result there, 29.40 and 6.20. Rupert 11.90 and Mrs. Bentley to pay $2.70 in an upset result of the first leg of the Quadrilla. Small spoils taking the race out. He's uh, a duffer on any sort of rain-affected ground, so that might be an indication of the condition of this track here today because he'd had seven dry track goes, one placing, and eight on slow and heavy and had finished nowhere on each occasion. Certainly made some rapid improvement at his third run back in from a spell. His last run at Cranbourne it was officially rated dead. It was a little worse than that, and he was beaten three lengths. So he'd had those runs under his belt to uh, get him ready for this. But nonetheless, he's been a bit of a surprise packet. Here are the Tates. 29.40 and 6.20 for Small Spoils. $11.90 for Rupert. $2.70 for Mrs. Bentley. Quinella's paid 638.70. Exacta 1,598.40. Trifecta $10,698. And the running double $178.50. Corey Brown's due to uh, break through here. He's had four rides and he's been placed in each of them. Third in the first, third in the second, and then second in the third on Sajoro, and second right there on Rupert. He's uh, knocking the door down and should be in the winner's stall soon, one would think. 8, 12 and 1. Fourth in number 13. Fifth in was number 10. Half ahead by three quarters. The time 137.41. All details on race four. Well, the main race coming up is the Vinery Australia 1000 Guineas at 2.50. Incredible race in which Dane Hill or Sons of Dane Hill have eight of the runners in the 1,000 guineas. So uh, four by Dane Hill, four by Sons of Dane Hill. A remarkable breeding uh, note which one of our viewers has kindly faxed us in. Now Warwick Farm, Red Trinket, uh, this lure three-year-old who produced a nice run on debut is the tip from Tony Brassel. The top rider though is Irish Crusader from Cloth Hilled and Grand City and then Sir Redford 2, 1, 4 and 6. Now here's a check of the betting figures. Irish Crusader 380, best value is in Queensland. Red Trinket, Tony's tip, best value is Queensland, $7.90. Good betting race this coming up. And a check over the page. As far as gear changes are concerned in race four, blinkers on the one, the three, blinkers off the five, nose roll goes on, number six, lugging bit comes off Sir Redford. $10 for I'm a Thunder. Correct weight there at Strathalbyn. Tony McAvoy has won the first three races on the card. Well, a man who follows the beat at the hot beat of that is Andrew Bensley. He's at Caulfield.
Yeah, we're down here and uh, joining us is Mark Young. Uh, Mark, I just wanted to grab you. Went down before you get the saddle here. How do you play things here watching a few races? Suited for runners on a bit? Or not? Well, I mean, the first three led, so you'd only say that if you're drawn wide, but that was pretty, the track's pretty even. It's, um, it's roughed up around the corner, but you'd have to sit seven or eight deep to miss it anyway, so I don't think it's going to make much of a difference yet. This is uh, your young one, Kate. She wants to talk into that microphone. Uh, is, how do you feel about Hot Beat the other day? All the, in fact, the last two or three have really been good, haven't they? Look, she's been on the way up. That was her third run up the other day. It's fourth today. She's right for the race. So if she gets some luck in the running, who knows? No doubt about that. How do you, can I have my microphone back, Kate? What do they say? Never work with animals and kids. How do you play it here from this, uh, from this barrier draw? Look, she'll, she'll go back. I mean, she it took us a while to get her to settle in her races, so it'll be suicide to kick up and try and go forward anyway. So hopefully she'll come across, get some cover and run on. She's in very, very good form anyway, Mark. You good. couldn't have her much better, could you? No, she, no, she's she's cherry for the race, so, yep. Good luck to you, Kate. Thanks, mate. One day we might uh, get Kate in. She can do a few tips for us, Mark. She'd probably be better pick than you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. There's uh, Mark and Kate leaving us, going to get the saddle for Hot Beat in the thousand guineas our next race, Brendan. You hang on to that golden microphone of yours, Andrew, because you could be in danger of losing it. 13 minutes away from Warwick Farm, and shortly the runners... Lil Craig Williams rides for Leon McDonald. Delay continues at Strathalban. This one by Yuma Tiller, second in the Edward Manifold behind Hugo Chaka, ran a very good race. And as they head out, uh, we can head trackside with this delay on at Strathalban. Andrew Bensley, what's the latest? Yeah, great atmosphere building up as the uh, continuation of those horses. There's Lilo Lil. We're going to talk about one Mo here, number three. It's at big double figure odds at the moment, $30, but I reckon that's great value. Ted, no luck, Trevor Bailey. Well, Andrew, no, she hasn't. The last start there, she got into trouble um, at the 400, and before that here at Caulfield, you just had to forget a run. And, uh, and the first start down here in Nascot Vale was very good. She finished off lovely. No doubt. Now, I was talking to Scotty Seymour during the week. He's got the opinion that uh, she'll be better off being wider than the barrier's not that concerned. Probably that's true, Andrew. She's going to be able to get out when she wants to, go forward, and uh, if she, if she's not interfered with it's going to mean a lot to her because she's sort of uh, a filly what you can't stop and start on her. She, uh, Scott was the opinion she got cluttered up and didn't really appreciate it the other day. No, there was a little bit of a backwash there coming up the turn, kind of thing. They had to stop and get off their heels, and, that, and by the time he got started again, kind of thing, they'd sprinted and uh, left her like a little bit flat footed, but she finished off good. All right, good luck, Trev. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, mate. Trevor Bailey there. On track favourites, ha ha, ahead of an easing Uga Chaka. And Ha Ha's tightened up on the tote. There's Magical Miss Bart's very smart three-year-old filly. Now back to Strathalban, late scratching number eight. It's just come out five. And there's uh, the top eight in betting. Just quickly to Lilo Lil's rider, Craig Williams. Run last start. What are your thoughts today? Yeah, well, at least she hasn't drawn 16. And uh, <laughs> But look, you can you can talk about a lot of unlucky runners in that race. And if you look from the straight onwards, there are. But, you know, she's done a great job to work from a, a wide draw last time. And today she's drawn nicely. And there's actually not a lot of speed in the race. So, you know, she might get a nice, easy run in front. And one thing she is, she's very tough. And what is the track like? There's definitely ground that is inferior. But looking at the naked eye when you're watching the races, you'd say that... You wouldn't agree with it because, you know, horses are winning up on the fence and, you know, it's racing like a very true track, but there is definitely ground out there. There is inferior, but in all fairness to the race they've been running, we've had two two-year-olds. Um, that race last time probably wasn't the best of guides and uh, the earlier races, where well, they went very slow, so but maybe later on they might swoop, but at the moment you'd say it's very even. OK, well, well then in race seven you ride Lodges. it got a hope? I like him. He's drawn out and uh, there's a lot of pace in the race. And he is one horse that is very consistent and I hope to see him swoop home late. OK, mate. Good luck. Thanks, Alf. Craig Williams and he rides Lila Lil in the upcoming Thousand Guineas and then he finishes off with Lodger. Alf, there's, or should I say, Andrew, there's been money on the tote for Hosanna. Has that been reflected on course? Yes, uh, thanks very much. A lot of atmosphere down here. Sorry, Brendan. $2.90, ha-ha. It's the favourite. They've supported it on track. Uh, all the other horses have been easy. The second pick is Yuga Chaka. Then out to Hosanna here, number four. You've had a good look at all of them. You're sticking with Lee Friedman's runner. 